Please remember to mute yourself as you come in if you're unmuted. Um, I don't want to have to mute anyone individually. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, I'm checking in here. Um, Proto, Sergey, Chris, are you guys all here? Yep, I'm here. Yep. Awesome. Okay, and then. Um, Cartridge team, you guys here? I see you. Hey, what's up? Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, glad this is working. This is not the yep. typical channel that we host these in, but because we're doing a screen share, uh, we have to use this. I still don't understand why the Stages channel, Discord, please listen to this. Uh, add screen share to Stages channel. That makes the most sense. Uh, but they haven't done that yet. So, uh, anyways. We've been asking uh, for like a year, so. It's, it's true. I've written them multiple support uh, emails. <laughs> um, okay, so it is 11. I'm going to go ahead and get started, guys, and then we will move into the demo here shortly. Um, first off, big news. Uh, as you guys may have already be well aware of, January 25th is when our test to earn event happens. Uh, really, really excited about that. But within that, we have some other fun things planned. So a creator competition. So anyone here in the audience who maybe wants to take on the challenge of creating some content, posting that on this channel, a new video to enter in, um, all, uh, you know, and sorry, I think someone's not muted. Um, remember to mute yourself. But yes, uh, within the um, test earn event, we're also hosting a competition for creators. Uh, you can win some cool stuff like asteroids, limited edition content creator hoodies, uh, and the grand prize will be a one-of-one one content creator hoodie uh, that we will be designing later uh, here shortly. Um, other than that, also a big thing to be aware of is phase one and phase two test to earn rewards are now live. You can check to see what you've earned. You don't have the tokens yet, but you can check. Um, if you guys don't know that link already, I pinned it in the testnet channel and I also put it in the article that we released today. You can find that in our announcements or on Twitter. Um, so very easy to find that. Um, and I think the next thing we want to talk about is uh, what's to come. Um, I think we should, we should just jump right into it. Um, Chris, do you want to get your share set up? And then uh, for those who don't know, uh, you do have to click on the general voice channel. Um, that'll bring up the screen where you have lots of people and you should be able to uh, see Chris's um, screen by hitting watch stream. So um, if someone in the audience could just let us know, or one from the cartridge team, can you guys see this? It's working. Perfect, okay. Um, I see it on my end. Um, Chris, whenever you are ready, if you wanna maybe give some words about what's to come, what you're excited for before jumping in, <clears throat> be awesome and then just to let the cartridge team know um one we don't have the cartridge flow uh fully done yet so if you guys want to check that out uh, anyone in the audience we have that posted on our twitter thank you guys for posting that earlier um you guys <laughs> and then um we'll have you guys talk about cartridge just a little bit later yeah um jp it might make sense to do that now since it'll be the, the appropriate context. Dave and Calvin, if you're okay with that, or and Terrence. Um, again, Terrence, I don't know if you just joined, but we obviously, you know, we're working on continue on the finalizing the flow, but it might be worth showing it off, um, kind of where it will be and, and what happens. Uh, you guys want to say a few words about that before I jump in? No, uh, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Terrence, uh, I see you're on here. Do you want me to start? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't know I could talk. But yeah, uh, do you want to go ahead, Gip? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, thank you guys, um, you know, for giving us the platform to introduce uh, Cartridge. I know that uh, some of the Influence ecosystem members might recognize us from the um, creators competition that we did kind of towards the end of last year. Um, but Cartridge is a StarkNet-focused gaming console that allows people to easily onboard to new games, manage their assets, uh, complete quests and build reputation, and seamlessly play with 
you know, session keys um, and a number of other features that we're building out for the Starknet uh, gaming ecosystem. So we've been really working closely with the influence team towards this next tester and event. Um, oh, we've got a little... Go ahead and mute him. Um, Sorry, guys, we got a little bit of background noise. Uh, we've been working really closely with the Influence team to build out uh, a new onboarding flow that allows people to onboard to Influence using WebAuthn, um, which in short really just means that uh, as opposed to having to create a new wallet. There we go. Um, as opposed to uh, having to create kind of a new wallet and you know manage a seed phrase and, and kind of do token swaps between layer one and layer two, um, it's a kind of one-stop solution that you can use to quickly onboard with just a fingerprint and a face scan or a face scan on your phone um, and, and quickly kind of jump into playing card, uh, playing influence. So, um, Darkos, are you uh, screen sharing? Do you have kind of the Twitter video up? Would you like to kind of give a preview? Um, or do you want to just kind of walk through the, the prototype that you've got? Um, actually, JP, do you want to? I have like the specific window share. Do you want to bring up Twitter and just share that real quick? Yeah, um, I can. I can do that. Let me see. I don't know if we can both share at the same time. I think we can. Let me. I. I. I don't know. We have. We haven't been able to do this. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, as a bit of a disclaimer, the the teaser that we posted on Twitter and, and, and what Etherway is going to show now isn't exactly what you guys will experience next week. There's likely going to be one or two kind of tweaks as we're, we're kind of finalizing the details here, but to give you kind of an idea of the way that this flow works. Um, yeah. Your screen um, share so looks like it's still loading. That's Can actually a great it? disclaimer across the board. Anything we show here today is still a work in progress. Uh, yeah, until, until the 25th. Well, I'd say until next Wednesday, but but ultimately until exploitation, you'll see a lot of continual improvements up until launch. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully you guys can see my screen. It's a pretty quick video, 17 seconds. So this just shows you the onboarding flow of cartridge. Um, this is really, again, just trying to make it so you no longer have to think about crypto wallets. No more. You think about gamer accounts like you do with Steam or whatever else that you guys use to play games. This is hopefully your last um, account that you need to create to play games. Oh, here we go. Is, uh, is anyone else seeing the screen? Mine, mine's still loading. No, it's not working yeah, for I either. Just loading, maybe. Oh, um, so let me, if that's the case, I just have to stop sharing and then reshare. I think that's the way that we have to fix it. Um, Share screen, share. Let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, here we go. The moment you've been waiting for. <laughs> so basically, um, you know, you guys can talk about this too, but really this is just like any other account that you guys have used. Um, you know, to play games, we want it to be that easy. And that's why we partnered with Cartridge, because we don't want you guys to ever have to think about blockchain when you're playing Influence. Uh, it will still, you know, you'll still have to think about it sometimes if you're selling or trading NFTs on secondary markets. But as far as playing goes, we want it to just be as natural as any other game. So this allows you um, to really just log in, create a username, you know, continue, use your fingerprint or whatever else that you guys want to use to log in, whether that be, you know, Google or any, anything else. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you guys are in the game. So I know that's not like the most exciting video in the whole world to watch, but this is huge UX solution. It's a huge UX solution for um, blockchain games in general. So this is really going to be onboarding, you know, hopefully the next, 10 million users into into blockchain plus um, and and make it so that they no longer have to think about it similar to the internet you're not like how do i use internet you just use it we want it to be that simple yeah and really what you're seeing there when you are prompted to put your fingerprint in during that account creation process is it's creating a key for you that's stored in your device's secure enclave so like it, it's a flow that a lot of people are, are starting to kind of just learn about. But if you go into your system settings and you search for pass keys, 
um, you'll see kind of a, a list of passwords that are starting to aggregate there. And so your cartridge login will be stored in your device's secure enclave, and you'll be able to use that across, um, you know, your, your, your laptop, your phone, um, or any other device to log in and play influence. So um, we're excited. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be sharing some more documentation if you guys are interested and want to learn more about WebAuthn and passkeys. Um, but it should be up and running for Tester in Phase 3 next week. So we're super excited. Yeah, thank you guys. I also want to just mention, if it's not clear to anyone, like this is non-custodial. So like you own your keys, they're stored in your device. Like this is not something that Cartridge can like take away your assets ever. Now, if for some terrible reason, Cartridge were to disappear, you know, you wouldn't be able to access it through Cartridge, but you'd still have access to it. So this is a really important thing and why we think it's so powerful is that they're not binding you. To anything this is this is simply for your ease and and to make it possible for you to get into any game that you want easily um <laughs> so. yeah, it's, it's like a it's a legit trojan horse into blockchain i'm really excited for it yeah and you'll be able to this isn't ready quite yet but you'll be able to plug this into your origin as well um, so you know we're not trying to be like a walled garden um, you know you'll, you'll be able to kind of um use both seamlessly yeah so thank you guys um but yeah let's go ahead maybe move in to um you demoing chris for those who don't see chris's screen he is sharing you may need to click uh, the share stream button um and then we'll get questions at the end questions are more we're more than happy to take questions uh, from the, or you know for the cartridge team as well towards the end yeah so <clears throat> what i'm i'm showing now is the um the new sort of main menu landing experience. Um, we're, as you can probably tell, sort of transitioning more towards a, a traditional game menu that you would you would see when you opened um, you know open a desktop client. Which, in fact, this is a desktop client. Um, I've mentioned this before, but I highly recommend anybody uh, try out the um, the PWA version of of Influence. There's a, a little download app button. In the current launcher that'll do it. Um, you can also just go up into the URL bar on the right side and click install. Uh, I think it's a really great experience. It's the way that I like to, to play Influence when I'm, when I'm playing around. Um, <clears throat> so yes, this is going to show you, um, you know, I, as soon as you log in, this is going to show you who's, who's my active crew. Um, ultimately, as, as we've mentioned previously, we're going to have uh, the ability to switch crews and have multiple crews per account. I know that was a highly requested feature, and we were able to to deliver that. Um, that will take place here as well. So if you're wanting to to switch kind of like from your mining crew to your your shipping crew, that'll be possible to do from this this screen. Um, you can also go over to to check out the settings that um, previously you know you were able to access from the game. They are also still available. Um, but once you're once you're ready and happy, you pick the right crew. You can just jump in a game. Um, this is the the same. Uh, that's what we're working on for cartridge. Ignore those. Um, so <clears throat> this is kind of uh, the what we have ready for phase three um, and what we're really excited about. Uh, I think, although it's just a list, <laughs> I think this is one of the really most exciting features that we've we've added. Um, it really kind of gives you everything that's going on for your crew at your fingertips. Um, so you're not going to be forgetting where you've mined, forgetting where you've sampled, forgetting where you've got an extractor uh, under construction. It's all right here, ever present for you. Um, and clicking on any, on any of them is going to zoom you directly to uh, not only the asteroid, but the specific lot that you're working on and give you immediately an overview of what's going on. Um, and so you can see, like, here I've got this core sample. I started running this, uh, I guess, 17 hours ago. It's clearly ready. So like I can just go ahead and analyze. Um, you'll also notice that anytime we have blockchain actions, we're not we're not making it sort of intrusive. Um, but we think it's important that we have those buttons be in this sort of purpley color um, to indicate that you are doing something on chain. Because ultimately, with, with Cartridge's help, with Arginex's session plugins, um, we're going to give you the ability to allow the wallet to sign certain transactions on its own without you needing to go and click uh, sign every time and wait for the wallet pop up to come up. 
So we've just sort of clear. Sorry, Chris, because you have that panel open, the purple's a little faded out. The top left that you guys are looking at, um, the purple is like something that's processing on chain uh, versus uh, you know yes. being kind of a game state. Uh, and and basically, as soon as that's processed on chain, I I just saw this pop up. I don't think that you guys will. Um, but you give it a, a a little bit to be accepted and indexed, and it'll it'll drop off. Um, so. The nice thing about this is you don't really need to worry about like waiting for every transaction. You can just sort of go about your day. You'll know where they are, whether they're pending or not. Um, and when they're finished, they'll finish. And you'll you'll get that little flash in your list um, and it'll move into um, into completed state. Um, and, and I wanted to mention uh, what I was saying earlier. So this this is the, the sort of like purple additional indication that like, hey, this is actually an on-chain action. So when you click this, something will occur on-chain. It's just uh, sort of an extra heads up that that's going to happen. Um, so and there you go. It's been accepted. Uh, and now that core sample has been analyzed. And we could go ahead and, um, and extract the resource from there. Um, so this is an example. We've, we've got our, our sample that was just completed. That sample identified a 3,200 ton deposit. You can select one of our warehouses. You can see uh, how far away they are. Um, you can see their, their current volumes. Um, this will give you an indication for travel distances. Uh, for example, if you had a warehouse that was 100 kilometers away, maybe on a daily prime, uh, it, might make sense not, it might not make sense to move your goods there, um, considering it will take up your cruise time. Um, but we'll select the closest one. We can check how much we want to extract uh, as a percentage of the whole. Um, I'll keep it relatively short so that I can actually finish this tomorrow. Um, and then same deal, you'll see that that purple color again indicating you've got an on-chain action. Um, that will start. And again, you can immediately just close these. Um, and in fact, we're going to mostly have them close automatically if there's no further action required. Um, this will also be processed on chain, and then you'll see um, you'll see one of these states telling you when that that extraction will be completed. Um, we've been trying to work really hard on making sure that the the things that are most important to you to get done uh, are at the top. So you're always going to see what's about to be processed on chain first, and then you'll see things that are ready, things that have some sort of pending action that you can do. Um, in this case, uh, for example, we've got methane extraction that's finished. Um, you can see that we switched over to the methane resource map. We extracted 776 tons from a previous core sample. Uh, and now it's ready to finish, and it'll end up in this in this warehouse. And so, like I said, no reason to wait for the other one to finish. You can just kind of keep keep moving. We'll submit that transaction and and move on. Um, so you know, again, this is like it's all about our focus uh, around removing painful parts of blockchain, the intrusive parts of blockchain, and getting rid of them in the game so that it stays a very immersive uh, experience where you're not really bothered by the technology that's underpinning the game. Because really, that, that shouldn't matter. You know, Whether you're using SQL or blockchain or WebSockets or whatever, ha what have you, like, nobody really cares. You, you're here to play a game. So we're trying to get rid of all of that um, and get it out of the way. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, some other exciting things that uh, you haven't seen yet, but are are new. Um, we've got now a list of your buildings. So if you're on an asteroid that has a lot of buildings, you can imagine it starts to get difficult to figure out what is where. So you can very quickly see uh, over here on the right which of your buildings are um, owned by you, what they're doing, uh, and quickly jump to the relevant ones. Um, and I I really I don't know why I really love this animation that jumps you around lots. I enjoy just kind of clicking around sometimes. Um, but it, it's great. I mean, it, it tells you exactly what you where you need to be uh, right away. Um, another great thing is we're, we're finally starting to integrate some of these great uh, 3D art assets. So you're now going to be able to click into the individual lots and see uh, the actual buildings that are present on them. Um, you can zoom around. Take a look at all, at all the work that has gone into these beautiful art assets. Um, these will be present for 
for each of the buildings that are there uh, at phase three and ultimately all nine of the buildings that will be present at exploitation. Um, yep. I think I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Well, maybe unmuted. <clears throat> uh, and then same deal with the extractor. So we can take a quick look at one of the extractor models as well. We want, uh, maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, Proto, do you, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about this model? Yeah. Like, why does it look this way? <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, these these buildings that we have assembled over the past several months, um, the mo models for them are really carefully thought out. I mean, we don't really sort of make a throwaway of anything in Influence. You know, every, everything is discussed to some extent, even if we decide to sort of back off from the realism a little bit and have something just because it looks cool. But yes, these, problem, these buildings specifically... I sort of go less so that I could um, spread out my doses and then meet up at the beginning of the year, and I, I worked out. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm just muting as necessary. Yeah, muting as necessary. Um, yep. Yeah, so we've got this extractor here in this in this case. Um, so the the most obvious thing that's going on there is the actual um, extractor building itself, the big sort of tower with the the red thing in the middle of it. Um, and so what that is is it's actually a movable um, platform. The whole thing can be moved. Um, you notice it has the sort of the screw feet at the corners, like those legs with the sort of screws at the bottom, and then the big cables holding it down. Um, that's all there to keep keep this building from sort of flying away from the asteroid since there's basically zero gravity. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, it's it's basically this this object that can be moved to any place that you find a deposit with your core sample and then can be secured to the asteroid surface. And then um, the sort of central motor can reach in there and start or start um, you know using robotic arms and drills and various other sort of moving parts to to harvest the resources from the, the interior of the asteroid. And then you know it, it's piped with uh, liquid or uh, gaseous nitrogen through the, that tube, um, sending it down to the sort of uh, centrifuge there in the middle, which actually just separates out by density um, or other other various techniques, separates out the, the target resources that you're mining. Um, it sends that target resource to the um, input-output hopper racks there. Um, you can sort of see that um, manifold of different um, storage, storage container racks there. Um, that's basically the material being injected into these storage containers, which then your hoppers can come and pick up later and take to your warehouse or your ship or wherever else you're, you're sending your resources. Um, and you could also see that array of batteries over there, um, which is actually being charged up by the um, by the solar panels on top of the, or the stellar panels rather, on top of the extractor. Um, so that's all part of the, the power system. And then the last part there is the um, where the sort of tailings go, the, the parts of the mining that you don't need. Um, and that's that second pipe that comes out of the centrifuge and then goes into underneath the big tarp. Um, that's pretty much to keep those um, those tailings from just going absolutely everywhere. And like, you know, in zero G, basically anything that starts getting loose will create a huge mess and get into your machinery and start breaking things. So we have this tarp that basically keeps these tailing piles down. And then when you're done, when you're ready to move everything along, you can pick that, that, that uh, tarp up and move it somewhere else. And you can see those tailing piles that were sort of left behind and also the holes <laughs> that were left behind by previous extractions. So this is an active industrial site that's being used to extract resources in a basically zero gravity environment. And I think you know, it's, it's really fun to sort of envision how that would work. And I think we've done a pretty good job of, of thinking that one through. And the, the warehouse has some similar, similar you know, thinking that has gone into it. Um, and I think we have some articles that have been published about this that you guys could go read about those two buildings in particular. But um, just briefly with the warehouse, we've got is basically you know like an earthly warehouse you've got all these racks for um containerized materials um in this case it's these very large shipping containers that we have in adalia they're almost twice the size of an earthly shipping container that you'd see like on a truck or on a ship um, these are really big objects um, but then they're they're moved around by these hoppers these little um sort of spacecraft that have just enough delta v to sort of thrust themselves across the surface of an asteroid but not really enough to travel between asteroids um, so those hoppers are moving things around, um, and then over top of the racks, we've got these um, what what looks like a roof, um, but it's actually um, Whipple shielding, which is a double layer um, chunk of sort of thin plating that protects um, somewhat from micrometeorites. So the <clears> micrometeorite <throat> will hit one layer and then sort of obliterate, and then hit the second layer. All the parts of that will hit the second layer, and and overall it'll protect um, from certain small micrometeorites. It'll protect the resources that you have in in those um, storage containers. Um, and then we've got that area in the middle there, which is actually for bulky parts, things that are a little bit too big to fit in a shipping container. And that's largely shipping, like ship pieces, you know, like hull plates and trusses and various, you know, robotic arms and things that would just not fit in those shipping containers. We've got a space to have those sit um, right there. So overall, we sort of considered all the different parts that you might need to store, the different things you might need to store, and how those would be stored. And you can sort of see um, in a few places there, there's like little QR codes kind of on the corners. Um, 
those QR codes are basically um, so that the hoppers can automatically locate where they are on the on the um, in the warehouse and, and put things and take them out again because we've, we've envisioned that transport is actually pretty automatic um, you'll be able to start a transportation action of moving materials from one warehouse to another one inventory to another um, automatically mm -hmm. you won't need your crew present to do that um, we think that'll be a nice sort of convenience slash time savings for you um, so you don't need to think about getting your crew to and from these inventories and so we've we've actually included you know the, that QR, those qr codes to make it look like <laughs> it's, it's automatic which i think is pretty cool so yeah, the, a lot of thought have gone into these buildings, and I think you know, can't wait for you guys to actually be able to check them out in 3D next week. Thank you, Proto, for sharing that. Um, you know, I think uh, next up, I I would love uh, Sergey if you're still here. Maybe we can do a little bit of a overview of you know the UI that you've been developing here, and why what your design thoughts are, and why it looks the way that it does. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, Chris covered a lot of it, um, and I can certainly go into the stuff that I've been kind of focusing on. You can start by, yeah, this this asteroid UI. Um, this is it's awesome to see it. Like the the stuff that I've been mocking up coming to fruition. If you zoom out for a second, you can kind of see and start by you know before you even get to the the lot level stuff. You have the asteroid. You have the telemetry planes. Um, you still have the the docking control gate. Um, a lot of stuff that I'm going to be looking at right right here, yeah, what's cool is you can see kind of as the asteroid becomes populated, as the empty lots turn turn into actual buildings, you can kind of see the, the twinkling of the blue uh, building pips. Um, we have a selection cursor. Uh, there's going to be some more tweaks coming to this down the line as we, of course, incorporate feedback, and I'm excited to, to get people... Uh, get people in there for the first time uh, next week to start um, exploring what this looks like. Uh, one of the interesting things that we've just been kind of um, messing around with on our own um, or um, exploring is the idea of see setting up the building sites versus the actual buildings. Um, right now there isn't a distinction, but I'm kind of, I'm looking at, um, creating one because as the building the buildings get erected on the surface of the asteroid in a process first you take an empty lot that doesn't have a building in it you have to set up a site then you move materials to the site after you've moved the materials to the site construction can proceed and you can kind of see so right here the icons for the sort of blue outline kind of ghostly building are essentially what the they, they will determine what the ingredients list for the building is that's not launching in this test phase but that that will be there this isn't this is essentially like you know kind of when you're you're placing a building in starcraft you know and you have that little like faint holographic outline of what will be there um this is how pretty much precisely how our game works you're going to place the you know the essential ingredients for the warehouse there then it's going to be your job to fill those ingredients and you got a 24-hour timer during which you have to transport everything to that to that warehouse site and if the timer expires and for whatever reason you you weren't there to um, begin construction the site actually reverts to an abandoned site uh, which means in multi-user asteroids anyone can can swoop in there and kind of claim that site for their for themselves they can take the materials or do whatever so there is going to be this interesting interplay of you know setting up a construction site moving your stuff over then you have to actually build the thing if you don't build the thing you risk losing control of the site um but that's going to be our uh, that's going to be our process so the site eventually will become a building once you've started construction then it's kind of going to be a building permanently and you're going to own that building um what else do we have going on here yeah obviously the the on-chain actions in the windows i'm excited to see that uh that playing out the the actions log right by your captain's portrait is going to be great you're going to be able to collapse that and stuff like that um and you can kind of see we've given some thought as to what actions come up first how to order how to order the stuff obviously the, the purple thing is the any ongoing on-chain thing it's waiting for the chain to process the blue items are basically ready things so it's kind of like going to be like clearing out your inbox you're going to come and 
uh, take care of all the blue stuff first, unless you want to, you know, uh, keep them around for whatever reason. And the gray uh, actions are all the things you are waiting to complete. Um, yeah, resources mode, obviously, that's going to be exciting to look into. Um, we've done a lot of thinking, actually, as to um, how, how, I guess, interesting slash frustrating it is going to be to like tab through all of the uh several resources in in the case of some asteroids there's you know like up to like 17 resources per lot um possible and um we're gonna we're gonna wait and see how that how that pans out but for now we'll just you have to go <clears throat> resource by resource and you know if you want to prospect for tanganite or coffinite or what have you you're going to have to go into that mode, and that's where um, you can begin core sampling from there. Uh, we did add a little thing that will, um, I guess, just show the the most common resource on a lot, which we thought was enough of a shortcut for, for players. If, you're just, if you just want to see, um, pick a lot on your asteroid and just see, hey, what's the most... The the uh, one of the super common use cases, I guess, is to to pick a lot and be like, well, what's what's the highest abundance thing on this lot? So if I want to min max like economy, just production, regardless of like a specific targeted resource, you would be able to see that very easily. And I wanted to point out too, um, just this this little piece of UI that that I was trying to highlight. Um, you know, we do have a lot of overlapping. You know skills, um, classes, uh, bonuses from the from the early adopter crew, uh, and so we've we've put a lot of thought. Sergey especially has put a lot of thought into how we present those, um, and so you're going to have a lot of information about you know why these numbers are what they are. Um, you know the fact that this is um, why is this 851 tons? You know why isn't my minimum zero? Like okay, you can just hover over and see. Well, it's because you have a minor on your crew, so you're not getting a penalty, but you only have one, so there's no bonus. You've got a prospector that gives you a, a plus 10% bonus, and then that's, you know, there's your, your number. Um, you'll notice that, like, that should be a plus, but we're in the process of finalizing these, so they'll be um, they'll be tight by next week. Uh, and same deal with travel. You know, if you want to know, okay, why is my, why is my crew uh, taking 15 minutes to get to and from uh, this lot? It's going to tell you why. It's going to tell you because it's outside of the free, free transport radius, you're, you're having to travel there um, and travel back. It'll tell you exactly how far and how long it takes. Um, and same deal with sample time. No bonuses on this one for sample time, but um, uh, I might be able to change my crew and show that. Uh, but that can go down or up, again, depending on presence of certain classes and skills or traits. Um, and one thing that people aren't seeing when you are clicking that action button, like the begin sample button, is that there is a wallet pop up that's coming up that I don't think is showing on your 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 screen, but you'll that'll be part of yeah. the flow for yeah, that's right. time being. Yeah, it's popping up. Um, although this would look a lot like uh, what it would feel like with session wallets in gate, in enabled. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got. I'm just excited to, you know, really dive in there with everyone and get your guys' feedback next week. Yeah, I'm unbelievably excited for you guys to be able to get your hands on this. Um, Chris, before we stop demoing, uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about strategy and, like, kind of open up the floor for that, too, because I think that's going to be a huge part of, like, after next week when people have their hands on this, they can start thinking about that. So for production chains, everything... You know, these are, uh, there's also like community tools, Illyrium, Darius, thank you, the production chain viewers. Uh, but you guys can actually start theory crafting on like what asteroids are going to do what, um, you know, where you can find those materials, what might be more difficult to craft. Um, but, you know, utilizing some of these um, pieces here, like the action log on the left, and then also being able to kind of click into a lot to see what the most dominant resource you can find on that lot is. I think it's going to be extremely helpful for you guys to start planning out, um, you know, alliances and how maybe you guys would form a group of people on an asteroid to to kind of conquer it in the best 
in the most efficient way possible. Um, you know, I guess there is some nuance there, Chris. Maybe do you want to talk about how lots uh, identify the resources? Um, meaning uh, in relation to the, the resource maps? Yeah, kind of like the positioning of where these are taken and things like that. I think that's probably a pretty important. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so these, um, and this is uh, somewhat a work in progress that that Proto and I are continuing to to work through uh, to ensure that these are accurate and, and giving accurate results based on the asteroid abundances. But in general, we're, we're trying to show these, I think, really pretty resource maps, um, and they are continuous. Um, what that means, though, is that when you are sampling it a lot, uh, you're actually sampling at that specific point, um, not at like the highest value in a radius. Um, and that's that's so that we can establish basically a random sample of of these resource maps rather than just giving you like the best result everywhere because that that results in a much higher uh, abundance than you would you would expect from the asteroids scan. Um, so in general, just know that like this you know this lot although it is just just off of this brighter band is going to sample within this band which is uh, i guess between 40 and 60. um so yeah you'll see 57. uh it won't sample you know in the 60 to 80 band because it's it's taking that sample at the center point of the lot um so yeah that is important um again like Proto and I are, are working on uh, an ongoing project to ensure that these distributions are all accurate and what you'd expect. Um, but that is an important detail to know. Um, sorry, I'm I'm currently building a building on this same asteroid, so you guys can uh, see that. So give me just one second. Um, maybe where, where is it? Uh, let me see here. Lot number in, in relation to the poll. Relation to the poll. Um, so if you go to Tanite, the material, you're looking at the uh, North Pole. I am three lots um, below the. Oh, I guess it depends on what side you're looking at too. <laughs> Facing the purple galaxy. Uh, in the back, <laughs> you, well, you are three lots down. Well, I see it if I just stare down from the top. Yeah, so it's in process mode, so it probably won't show yet. Yeah, so so I think what we would like to show here is, um, I think I'll just turn it off. Uh, we, we have now um, enabled, um, all of the actions occurring on an asteroid to be broadcast to um, to everybody that's that's currently looking at the asteroid. So you should get real time uh, information about what's being built um, and how things are changing locally on the asteroid, even if it's another player um, taking the actions without having to refresh the page, uh, which is pretty exciting. I think it it makes the game feel much much more real time. Um, certainly is vital for any alliances asteroids where there's there's a lot going on and and certainly for Adelia Prime as well where there's inevitably going to be a lot going on at any given time. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh will we get asteroid chat? Like a local chat for the asteroid? <laughs> yeah. Uh yes. Um we're we're actually we basically have all the infrastructure in place to um Finalize that. Uh, it's effectively just a little, a little bit of additional work to um, provide that input and then broadcast those chat messages. So, so yes, very much so. Uh, local asteroid chat is a planned feature. Okay, thank you. But not for phase three, right? Not for phase three. That's prior to launch, or like at launch. Yes. <laughs> if if we, yeah, I definitely don't think it's going to be there before uh, before launch. Um, yeah, so I think at this point, questions would be fantastic. Um, if you guys want to just unmute yourself and ask a question, you can do that. If you can't unmute yourself, that's because you had your mic on during this. I heard some feedback and I muted you. You can always just let me know. Uh, ping me in game questions and I can unmute you. 
um, or I can unmute everyone. But if, if I hear feedback, I'll probably just mute you again. But yeah, um, any, any questions would be fantastic. We'd love to answer them. We're really excited about that. And you can ask questions about cartridge too, if you, if you would like. Yeah, I had a question about cartridge. cartridge. Um, I was wondering if, if it would handle like sort of the end-to-end -end payments as well. Like for people who don't want to mess with crypto at all, could they just go to their cartridge account and say like, here's my credit card, add some funds? It is on the roadmap. Um, we're, we're talking with a couple of the FIAMs uh, right now. We're kind of working through like terms and conditions. But yeah, that's yeah. the plan. You'd be able to onboard the card fridge with a credit card with existing, you know, Ethereum and Layer 1, two, um, and, you know, play any of the games that are in the StarkNet ecosystem. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, feel free if you want to send me a message afterward or hop in our Discord and answer questions. Um, Gabe, on that topic, do you want to potentially talk a little bit about um, cartridge social features that you guys are likely going to have in the future that aren't there yet? <laughs> we'll have to go back to Chris's uh, disclaimer about uh, um, you know features that are not built yet. But yeah, you know, either way, I we've been talking a lot about kind of incorporating a social layer into a cartridge as well, um, so that you'd be able to kind of put guilds together. Um, and the possibility of using shared assets. So um, that's something that's kind of on the roadmap for later in Q1, um, but it's something that we're really excited about. Um, you know, something I probably should mention is that the onboarding flow that you guys saw um, at the beginning of this um, was just kind of like the um, in-influence UI of Cartridge. Cartridge, if you just go to cartridge.gg, and I'll put it in the chat, has its own kind of separate UI where you can look through um, you know, on Influence's game page, for example, um, you know, some of some marketing materials, you can look through your assets, you can look at the active quests. And, and that's something else that we should, should probably mention, um, that if you guys have seen the test to earn phase three guide, you'll know that there are three or four quests with a couple different kind of sub quests. All of those are going to be represented as quests on Cartridge, and you'll get rewarded um, both with Sway, but also with Cartridge experience points. So um, you guys should check that out in UI. We'll, we'll be putting it on Twitter shortly, and then, of course, next Wednesday, you'll be able to actually play through those quests. So it should be fun. Yeah. Um, and just so everyone knows, you guys can get a little bit of alpha, I guess, uh, when it comes to what's happening next week. Uh, the quests that we're doing this time are a little bit different than last time. Um, they are going to be kind of quest lines. You do multiple things in order to achieve the particular uh, quest or complete it. Uh, and then it does not say how much sway you earn per quest. It says percent of max. So there will be multiple quests, each one a different percent. And then if you complete all of them, that's 100% max reward. And then at the end, we will tell how much sway you've actually earned um, through that rewards portal. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is, um, one, we don't want people to kind of game the system as much uh, to just find out how do I do X the most and earn the most. This is about play. We're really trying to make people enjoy and play the game. And so just by participating in this, doing the actions that we kind of showcase today, you know, you guys should be pretty covered, um, but you'll have all the information of how to co complete those quests, uh, you know, and, and in cartridge as well, those will be listed. I think there might be some questions here in the chat. Let me see here. Oh, um, Chris, do you want to speak about session wallets and whether or not, you know, they're going to be here? Uh, they will be here. Uh, as to whether they'll be here on Wednesday, it's a, a little bit of a question mark. Um, but we are trying to get those here as, as quickly as we can. I'd love to get help testing those um, both on on Arginex and on on Cartridge. Um, we're we're working away at that. Uh, also, don't think that as of the 25th, development will stop for Phase Three. We'll we'll continue adding things, and certainly we'll be responsive to feedback that we hope we get from all of you. Um, so, you know, it's very likely if it's not there as of the 25th, it will be there in the days, um, you know, just afterwards. But yeah, I mean, the, yeah. the idea with, with session wallets or session keys, in case anybody's unaware, is that um, you are, are giving permission to 
your wallet, um, Cartridge or Arginx, uh, Bravos doesn't support it yet, um, to sign uh, certain messages on your behalf without prompting you to, to sign them manually. Um, and you know we're gonna we're gonna try to select an appropriate set. Um, I am sure we will build towards this being uh, more and more flexible to where you can set select the set that you're comfortable with. Initially, it's likely to just be a fixed set, um, but we're gonna be picking a set that that should make reasonable sense. You know, not uh, including transactions where you can um, uh, you know have the wallet sign a, an asteroid transfer on its own or you know send all your sway to somebody else or, or whatever but but things like you know starting a core sample finishing one uh starting a building um you know moving goods between your warehouses stuff like that like things that you that are, are maybe a little bit lower risk in general and you want to be um smooth and not be interrupted constantly as you're playing by these these prompts Hey, Chris, question. Is there is it possible to set different profiles for different sets of transactions that you would want to allow? For example, if you wanted to just allow the, the finish transactions and none of the other ones, would that be possible? As in, like, um, per person? Per, yeah, if yeah, you wanted to like, yeah, set up a profile, is. like, what, what to allow. Yeah, and I, I think that's, like, some, the, the sort of flexibility that we have to, um, we have to, to figure out how to provide as we, as we build into session wallets, for sure. Um, I think... Uh, I'll, I'll let the cartridge team speak more on this, but I, I know that they already have some UI at least around um, managing those sessions, and possibly it includes some of that customization already. Yeah, you'll you'll definitely be able to kind of manage the active sessions that you have. So as far as next Wednesday, I'm not sure if you'll be able to manage individual sessions. Um, I think we're approving them as a bundle uh, for test error in phase three, uh, but it's definitely something that we're working on. Um, so we'll, we'll 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 keep you guys up. Awesome. Um, and I saw I see a question in uh, in chat um, about uh, whether cartridge is its own wallet. Um, probably a good one to answer. Um, yeah, I don't know if we still have Terrence on here who can speak about the architecture, the kind of plugin. Um, but yeah. we, we don't like to use the term wallet. The, the answer is yes. Uh, Cartridge is a self custodial solution. So you'll be able to actually hold kind of any in game assets in your cartridge. We call it a controller. So the cartridge controller. Um, and then in a future state, once we're kind of unblocked, it's something we've been working on for a while, you'll be able to plug in. Uh, an existing version wallet into cartridge and you'll be able to kind of share assets. So, um, yeah. Uh, will we be able to buy crew, uh, cr buy crewmates on Adeline Prime? So on yeah, phase three? That's, um, that's a great question. So you will be able to mint new crewmates in the test net uh, in phase three. Right now that action is not, uh, I don't think it's going through processing at the end. Um, maybe Chris, that might be something you can speak on. I know it wasn't yesterday, um, but yes, the maybe answer to your question on, um, is uh, to recruit. Maybe do you mean on current comment on Gurley? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it won't, um, but it will be available again as soon as we roll this out. Um, I it, just based on contract changes, uh, the current client won't be minting uh, Adelians, but as soon as this rolls out on the 25th, you'll be able to. Uh, another question that I had in the game questions channel, um, I think it was from Test of Time, uh, is you know those resource maps that happen on the surface of an asteroid when you mine uh, particular materials. Does that resource map change over time? No, it doesn't, and no resources do not run out. What uh, does run out is a core sample, and you will have to resample that lot in order to find a new deposit of materials. Let's see, going to the questions channel. Sorry, I've got questions coming in three different places, so it's taking me <laughs> just a little time to sort through any of them. Uh, Proto, it looks like you've been answering pretty well in the game questions. Was there anything you wanted to share in voice, though, um, to give people some information? Um, not really. I mean, I could go into into the details on how the resource resources work a little bit more just to sort of clarify some of those. Um, 
So basically, you know, when you run the the scan scan your asteroid on layer two, um, the new scan that we've added, um, that generates a random seed for this asteroid, which then will determine all of the heat maps for that asteroid. And so those are fixed. Like once once you run that layer two scan, the heat maps that you get will be pretty much how they're going to be. Um, and then so that basically determines at every point on the asteroid what abundance each resource has um, on that asteroid. And we're trying to normalize that so that, you know, if you add up all the resources, you sort of come to 100%. Um, that's one of the things that we're <laughs> kind, of, kind of fixing right now. It, it doesn't do that on the testnet and probably won't for phase three. Um, but we will fix that before obviously launching. Um, and so then when you sample at a particular lot, as Starkos was saying, as Chris was saying, like it samples at the exact center point of that lot, um, whatever those resources on that heat map are. And then that, that abundance, which is, again, zero, between zero and 100%, that dictates um, the range within which your core sampling will be able to give an amount, a deposit amount. So if, for example, you're at a place where the abundance is 100%, your deposit, maximum deposit size is 10,000 tons. So there's a, that's the biggest deposit you can possibly get. Um, and if it's safe at 50%, then your biggest possible deposit size is 5, you know, 5,000 5, tons. Um, so it scales just like that. Um, and there's an additional aspect, which is that your crew bonuses actually play into the deposit size as well. Um, but it doesn't make it go above that, whatever that maximum, depending on the abundance is. So, you know, it could make you more likely to get closer to that maximum abundance with the core sampling, but it won't make it go over that, whatever that maximum is. Um, so once you have that core sample in your hand, that's you, you then take on to use in your extractor and that will determine how fast you are able to extract resources um, from that location and, and the overall amount of resources that you can get before running out of that core sample. Um, so that's sort of the general flow um, of all this. Uh, this is also a good opportunity to maybe just talk a little bit about crew and efficiencies. I know uh, Darkos has already kind of showcased how that's modified on lots when you're core sampling and, you know, the bonuses that you're getting. But it's both raising the max that you can find and the min. So, like, having more miners in your crew is going to raise both min and max. Uh, and the more um, miners that you have in your crew the more that gets modified. And then there's also those traits that you can get through um, your crew assignment that could adjust uh, that as well. As you can see here, prospector is the trait that is highlighted here. Um, and then you can see that you're getting uh, a one, uh, you know, you're, you're getting, a, because you have one minor, uh, you're getting that bonus there. So, um, you know, on my crew right now, I'm running four miners uh, and then what that's you know allowing me to have is a um, 1.4375 um, bonus uh, so it's modifying it you know pretty heavily and i'm getting you know a lot more uh, chris can you maybe talk about like time of action and how that might be affected by different traits and crew yeah i'm i'm stacking my crew here now with with miners and I, I believe i've got surveyors on here so i'll be able to show that off um, but basically, you you can have actions that um, uh, where the base time is reduced uh, due to bonuses that exist. Uh, in this case, you'll see that the core sample time will be reduced from its base of of an hour. Um, it can also go up. So, like if I had a crew that had no miners whatsoever, um, you would see that the core sample time goes way up. I think it's a 100% penalty effectively. So it goes from an hour to two hours. Um, and, and you'll see this this pop up in, in various different places in the game where you know you, you need to have a crew that is aligned with at least one uh, uh, crewmate with the appropriate class so that you're not being uh, heavily penalized. And we hope that that will encourage at least somewhat mixed composition crews. So we're coming pretty close to the end here. I'm happy to take some more questions. This is a very exciting, um, you know, show and tell this time. But yeah, please just unmute yourself and ask a question if you guys have questions. Yeah. So so real quick. Yeah, I've got a quick one. Um, I'm wondering about um, like if you have multiple people on an asteroid, um, and, or somebody new coming to an asteroid, and you're controlling certain lots and you build buildings on them. Like, is there going to be a on-chain in-game way to like sell individual plots or like access to plots sort of i guess i know there's renting overall but that's is that you know split up into parts of asteroids uh yeah so that will be up to um 
the owner of the asteroid and, and how they want to decide to make those lots available for for rent. Um, you know, that could be could be down to making the rent free, uh, you know, for, for friends or allies. Um, it could be only making a portion of the asteroid leasable uh, or none of it. So that's all going to be very, um, very flexible. Um, and that's all kind of, you know, al aligned or uh, in context with the concept of lot control um, and lot occupation, where whereby we have the um, the mechanic where you can actually sort of squat on a lot that nobody is using, um, while still allowing the uh, either the tenant who holds a proper lease or the owner of the asteroid to, to kick that um, that squatter off um, if they if they decide to uh, use that lot at some point in the future. So it should be. And should that's be all mechanics that. All right. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say it should be quite flexible. Yeah, and and note that those are all mechanics for testnet phase four and beyond. Um, for testnet phase three, literally anybody can build anywhere, <laughs> and there's one PVP mechanic, which is being able to uh, occupy a lot. If somebody has built a building site and hasn't started it yet, after 24 hours, it will become available to be occupied by somebody else, and so you can take it away from somebody else. But otherwise, there's not any sort of uh, eviction or rent or or those kinds of things. Um, so if you have an asteroid um, and you want to have all the lots to yourself go start building right away on it for phase three yeah um there is a question uh here in the chat that says once we've set up our crew and do an action are you able to change your crew and how will this affect the previous action yes <clears throat> we've thought about that uh uh fairly recently actually um so we are we're now effectively um uh caching the the composition of your crew when you performed the action and, and using the bonuses of the, the crew that actually did the action, not the newly composed crew. Um, so there should be no uh, no exploits where you can effectively like change your crew mid action uh, and expect that those new crewmates who had no part of, of starting it uh, will, will impact it at all. Yeah, like most actions have a, a period of time where the crew is required for that action. So the crew getting to that spot and then doing something there and then coming home again. And then the overall action itself can actually potentially take a lot longer than that. Um, for example, if you start a, an extraction round, your crew needs to go to the extractor location, do some stuff that'll take a certain fixed amount of time, then go home again. But the extractor is actually automatically running in the background for potentially much longer than that. And then the materials are being shipped to the destination. And so when you start that action, the crew that you're starting it with is, you know, their bonuses apply. But if they once they're back home at their base again, even if the action is still running, you can switch that crew out or, or change something about them. And it won't, won't impact the automatic action that's still running from the, that they started a little while ago. I'll just chime in here to add that I'm actually really thinking about a, a cool interface when we do have crew timings and activities in action that link two lots that will clearly and diegetically show, you know, a crew leaving lot A, arriving at lot B, you know, doing the action and then returning home. You know, there's all kinds of cool stuff that I that I imagine is going to be happening when you're when you're setting up transfers and, and, and shipping lanes and to to give you the feel that there are going to be actual, you know, astronauts buzzing around these asteroids doing stuff that it's not just actions occurring on a uh, on kind of a, a rock without, um, without other stuff going on. Yeah, so it looks like most questions have been answered in all the chats. Um, we've got just a few more minutes. Do we have one more question from anyone? Uh, sure, I'll ask one. Yeah, go for it. No? Yeah, yeah, sorry. We can, we can hear you. <laughs> um, uh, just relating to crew and... Um, actions. Uh, food consumption is, uh, according to the wiki, is a, is a scientist action. It, like, how, how's that going to work? And how much of a penalty is it going to be not to have a scientist in a crew in terms of food consumption? Good question. Um, <clears throat> the food will mechanic will not be in at phase three. It'll come in after, but it is being actively worked on right now. Um, the idea is that. Uh, your your food is, is something that you sort of load into your crew. 
um, and they steadily consume it um, while it's there. Uh, and once they once they reach a point, um, I think I think currently we're, we're playing with uh, half half the food remaining, um, half of the max that you can load your crew with. Uh, they will start effectively rationing for themselves, and your overall efficiency. So basically, your your efficiency for anything you do. Um, is going to start to reduce as that, that rationing goes up and up. Um, so things will take longer or they'll yield less. Um, the, the key role there of the scientist is that, that they're going to be able to reduce um, that penalty and also provide a, a general benefit to the amount of food that's consumed. Um, and that, that's another um, bonus that exists, for example, for having your crew in a habitat versus having your crew sitting in a light transport on the surface somewhere. Um, Crews in habitats get a bonus to uh, the amount of food that is consumed on a uh, basically per period basis. Well, Great, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking the question, guys. Everyone, um, you know, I appreciate you guys being here. Cartridge team, thank you guys for being here. Really excited for the 25th. If you have any questions, I highly recommend reviewing the article that I posted today. Uh, and then if that doesn't answer your question, feel free to ping me in the chats or DM me. Uh, but uh, yeah, make sure to ping me and not Darko. So we, we need him focused on, <laughs> on the final bits and pieces. Uh, but, you know, there's lots and lots to come, guys. And if anyone here, you know, enjoys making content or wants to take a crack at being a content creator or at least showcasing influence, um, go read those that creator competition doc that I posted today, and and we'll you know have a, lot, a bunch of fun for that. I'd love to be able to give you guys some sweet uh, merch and rewards for doing that. And you know this is only beginning. This is the first I think you know what I would consider playable uh, test net release, and it's only going to get more exciting from here. So thank you guys for being with us for so long, and we're really really excited to get this game into your hands. So. Have a great day. Um, any closing comments from, you know, Chris or, or Proto? Oh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Exciting to share it. Um, I'm really excited to see you all playing around with it next week. Can't wait. Yep, can't wait. I've been having so much fun already. You guys are going to love it, I think. Can't wait for it, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, take care. You guys are all Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, guys. Okay. See you all. <laughs>